In this video, we'll go over the exact steps I took to book my second major trip to Asia in business class for a couple hundred dollars and some credit card points. We'll go over where I got my points, how to search and redeem, important routing details, and major lessons learned you do not want to miss. To start off, I booked two major Asia trips this year, one to Taiwan and Japan in EVA business class, which you can check it out up there, and one later this year for my parents and I over to Singapore, Korea, and Japan, trying out Singapore Airlines business class. But you're probably wondering, don't you need a ton of points for that? Well, kind of. In most cases, you're probably looking to book for one or two people, which is much easier than trying to find award space for three or four like I did. That said, for my trip specifically, I used 137,500 points along with about 160 US dollars per person, which is actually more attainable than you might think. And that's only because I'm connecting through so many cities. Typically, a one-way business class flight from the West Coast to Asia can be had for 87 and a half, 75, or even 55,000 points. I am still looking for a good return flight though, but more on that later. So then when it comes to earning those points, the best way is actually not through spending, but using welcome bonuses. For example, if you were targeted for the American Express 150,000 offer for or the platinum card, that itself would already cover this trip for one person. And that would only require spending $6,000 over the first six months, or an average of $1,000 a month. Yes, it does have an annual fee, but it also has a ton of different benefits and credits to help bring that fee way, way down. Where personally on the card, I use the Uber credit, the hotel credit, airline fee credit, and Saks Fifth Avenue credit, which is more than enough to cover the annual fee every single year. Or if the platinum isn't your thing, consider a card like the Capital One Venture X with its 75,000 point welcome bonus along with two major credits to help offset the 395 in annual fees. Being the $300 in travel credit, which you could use to say book your accommodation at your destination, and $100 worth of points every anniversary year. And then of course there are Chase cards, where just by having the Chase trifecta, that's a a total of 100,000 points, which combined with a little bit of spending already puts you pretty close. Now you might be wondering why I jumped around American Express, Capital One, and then Chase. Well, the wonderful thing here is that Aeroplan transfers from each of those three programs, giving you a ton of flexibility on where you want to earn your points. There are even better programs like ANA, but there's a couple nuances like only transferring from American Express or having to book a round trip flight. All right, so let's say some time has passed, you've gone through some cards and accumulated enough points for a trip. Congratulations. Here comes the actual hard part, trying to find award availability. Now, I don't think this part of award travel and credit cards is emphasized enough. This is hard. You will have to be flexible and put in the work to try and fit everything together. Yes, the immense value is there and is real, but you do have to be realistic on the amount of work you would have to put in. Okay, with that out of the way, where do we start? Well, first, when traveling across the Pacific, a few major airlines come to mind. You have your ANA, EVA, Singapore Airlines, and Asiana all on Star Alliance to your JAL and Cathay Pacific on One World. For the purpose of this video and where most of my experience lies, we'll focus on Star Alliance Airlines here. If you're interested in JAL or Cathay Pacific, look out how to best use Alaska Miles. Cool, so now that we've narrowed down which airlines and alliance we'll be flying with, where are the best places to do the actual searching? There are more limited or paid sites like Cowtool, Points.me, or Expert Flyer, or there are some free and decent search engines like United and Aeroplan that show most partner availability. And I say most because I think only Aeroplan shows Singapore Airlines availability. Also regularly keeping up with what's new in the award travel space is also handy, which is one major way I use to get notified 
of some award space. When it comes to availability though, unless something changes, you usually have to either look far, far in advance, like nine to 12 months out, or really last minute, like two to three weeks. Usually those are the ranges that most airlines will release award space to the tune of two or three seats per flight. Now the steps that we'll be going through are the exact same ones I did when booking my trip from YVR to Singapore and then onwards to Korea and Japan. Although the exact cities don't matter as much as the methods being used. But because I can't show you my exact dates and flights because they're no longer available, I'll be looking at flights about nine or so months out, which is similar to the time when I booked my flights. Everything here is live as I'm making this video on June 21st, 2023, meaning all the availability and everything is real. So for example, if I search from YVR to Singapore sometime next year, I do see some availability like these two seats going from YVR to Seattle first, and then onwards to Singapore flying Singapore Airlines business class for just 87 and a half thousand points in May. Also make sure that the mixed cabin is all right though, which in this case is 98%, which likely means the flight from Seattle to Vancouver is economy, while the flight from Seattle onwards to Singapore is in business class. And then if we look for flights from Singapore to Seoul, we'll see that there are plenty on Singapore Airlines or Asiana for 45,000 points. So that's the process I went through to look at each leg of the trip I wanted to see when there was award space available. From YVR to Singapore, and then Singapore to Korea or Japan. But here's the cash. Aeroplan has a feature where you can add just 5,000 more points to add a stopover to any one-way flight. So in my case, I could add 5,000 points to the flight from Singapore to Seoul and add Tokyo as a destination instead, or whichever order makes sense. So knowing there is a flight from Singapore to Seoul, I can then search up any flights from Seoul to Japan on any day after I get to Seoul. In this case, there are a few of these flights. Then I would note all this down and go back to the first page and try and put together a multi-city or stopover itinerary. Remember to remove flight two here because we're technically only booking one flight with one stopover. So we'll put Singapore as the departure city with Tokyo being our destination and have Seoul as the stopover. We'll be leaving Singapore on May 29th and because the flights we found from Seoul to Japan were on June 2nd, that's a four day stopover. So let's put that in and then go search. Okay, so note how this itinerary only costs 50,000 points, which is the original 45, plus 5,000 for that stopover. I would then do some research here, looking at each of the itineraries and seeing what airlines and what aircraft is being flown. Say the A350 on Asiana or the 787 on Singapore Airlines. You can then even go a step further and search on sites like Seat Guru or Aerolopa to see what type of seats are on those flights before you decide which itinerary you want to pick. But either way, just select one, go through the flow and you can finish your booking. It's pretty surprising to see that the same itinerary on economy is 30,000 points, whereas on business is less than double that at just 50,000 points. As you can kind of see, the most important leg of this trip is the Trans-Pacific one from YVR to Singapore. Once you're there, then all the flights within Asia have much more availability. That was a lot of info, so feel free to re-watch that section to really understand the process. But to go over the high level steps when searching and booking, first I looked at what space was available for three people going from the west coast over to Asia. In my case, this was YVR to Singapore. Then I knew I wanted to go to Japan and or Korea, and I knew you could add 5,000 points to add a stopover to any Aeroplan one-way award. So I searched for Singapore to Korea or Singapore to Japan, as well as between Korea and Japan, laid out all the flights and dates that I wanted to then get ready for actually booking. I then put this into the multi-city search, including the stopovers and check that everything works and went on to transferring my points over from Capital One, American Express and Chase, which all pretty much cleared immediately. I also transferred in that order because that's the order I value my points at from least to most being Chase. Now, one unfortunate issue, which meant I had to pay significantly more points in is because of 
of a very specific Aeroplan stopover rule. I think Prince of Travel explains this best, but basically your routing has to be logical, where the general rule is your route can't be 100% over the direct distance between the two points. And you know because I'm talking about this, I was affected. So the routing I would have liked is YVR to Korea with Singapore as the stopover, but that does not work. You see, the direct distance from YVR to Korea is 5,108 miles. However, the distance of YVR over to Singapore as a stopover and then on to Korea is 10,834 miles. That is over 100% more than the direct flight of 5,108 miles, rendering this itinerary illogical. And I just could not get around this barrier given the same issue happens if you try and do Japan instead of Korea. The only way this works is if there was an award space from YVR to Korea and Japan first, and then onwards to Singapore. But unfortunately, that did not exist. All right, so how did I do with this redemption? And how does it compare to paying cash instead? Well, it's not the most straightforward to compare right now, given A, it won't be accurate to look at the cash fares for when I'm flying this year, given the times won't match up. But I'll use prices of spring of next year, which is the same amount of time as when I booked my flight this year back in December of 2022. And B, sometimes one-way flights are more expensive than half of a round trip. So depending on what your itinerary is, the redemptions could be a little bit off. But to attempt a comparison for leg one, I couldn't find a flight direct from YVR to Singapore, but did find one from Seattle. And that's going for $3,600. Then if we look at Singapore to Korea, that's $1,300. And finally, from Korea to Tokyo, which is about $400, which means all in with a similar time out would cost you $5,300, which divided by 137,500 points will give you a value of 3.85 cents per point, or a tad bit lower if you factor in a little bit of taxes and fees. And for a full picture, a similar itinerary flown on economy would cost you $1,200. But at the end of the day, it really comes down down to how much would you truly pay for that business class itinerary. Honestly, I thought it would have costed more than $5,300, but if I really had to estimate an amount I would pay for an itinerary like that, I would say about $3,000, where if we use that to calculate the points value, that would be 2.2 cents per point, which is still above the typical two cents per point average that gets thrown around. Now, you may have noticed that all of my calculations and my itinerary ends in in Japan, not home in North America. That is because I haven't yet found a decent award flight back from Japan, something I'll be constantly keeping my eye out for. Because you're able to change your aeroplan award bookings for $100 Canadian dollars or cancel for $150, I wanted to lock in a decently priced award flight returning from Japan first. So by searching using the exact same methods, I found these flights on United from Japan for just 35,000 aeroplan points. At the same time, there was a sale on purchasing aeroplan points giving a 50% bonus or buying each point at 1.31 cents, much lower than the two cents per point value that I paid my chase points at, which I would have needed to transfer over, which means the 110,000 points I needed for the three flights costed me about $1,440, locking in those United flights for about 480 per flight, while preserving the ability to transfer to other flights like economy on ANA, or business class flights if they open up for just a hundred Canadian dollars. Remember that more award availability opens up within two to three weeks of the actual flight. And looking on Google Flights, a flight back from Japan would have easily costed upwards of $800 per person without the refundability. So I would say it's a worthwhile trade-off. So that was a long and really eye-opening journey. But there are cheaper ways to do what I did had I not been rushed to lock in the three award space, or actually four given my partner booked the exact same routing, or knew in advance the exact cities and dates I wanted to go on. One, transfer Amex points over to ANA and book that way. Given it would have costed you 136,000 points to do a round trip business class flight from North America to Singapore, 
Singapore and have the ability to do a stopover, which would have been done in Korea or Japan, which would in total be a much better points value. However, a &E does require you to book round trip and there wasn't good availability for return flights on where I wanted to go. I also don't think I had enough Amex points to cover this trip for four people. Two, if timing was better, I could have leveraged any aeroplan transfer bonuses that regularly come up. For example, on my recent trip to Taiwan and Japan, I was able to book that using a 30% bonus transferring my points. If a similar bonus was available on Capital One, American Express, or Chase during the time I booked this itinerary, I could have saved so many points. But it wasn't worth likely losing that award space. And three, if you need to top off points, consider those purchase bonuses too. For example, if you had the same 50% bonus on your Aeroplan points, the 137 7,500 points would have only costed you about $1,800, meaning you can book that itinerary for about a third of the cash price just going through this method. And then a few more general lessons when it comes to award booking, really narrow down which cities you want to go to and what dates you can fly. Because you never know when a huge amount of award flights might come onto the market like it did for these Singapore Airlines flights. Sometimes when they change planes to one with more capacity, new routes open up, or partnerships get set like showing Singapore Airlines award space on Aeroplan, those are some great ways of snagging some award flights, of course along with booking far in advance or really last minute. And then more specific to Aeroplan, consider locking in your hardest to find flight first like your Trans-Pacific one. Because having to pay 100 Canadian dollars to change or 150 to cancel an award booking is a small price to pay for that bit more flexibility. So that was a full end-to-end -end about what I do when looking to book award travel. It's not perfect, but I'm always learning. Let me know down below what you think, what I could have done better, or any other questions you have about this complicated process. And if you want to get started yourself, check out this video for some amazing cards that will accelerate your points earning. See you over there.